Welcome to episode 150. It's the last episode of 2020, and I'm really excited to be here with you and Clarity Compressed. My name is Paul J. Daly. I'll be your host, and today we're going to hear not from one, but we're going to hear from five people that are amazing, and I'm going to tell you who they are in just a second, but I'll tell you what, I'm so glad we saved this episode for the end of the year. We're making our way through the fog of life, and Clarity is understanding where we are on the map. You are here. (laughs) Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. Okay, so kind of easily excitable today, but... If you're anything like me, you're really excited to get out of 2020 because it has been a heck of a ride. Granted, I hate this. No, I don't hate to say this. I'm happy to say this is that I wouldn't trade anything that happened this year because I'm a different person for the better because of the struggles and the trials that I had to go through this year. So many things have become cemented in my heart, in my personality as a result of all the turmoil and all the uncertainty and all the injustice that has happened this year. I'm not going to get into you. You know what it is. You know who you are. But I will say that I have a deeper conviction about the things that I believe than I did when I came into this year. And that goes across the board about my family, about my faith, about my team, about the industries that I'm in. More convicted, not less. And that's a good thing. It's important for us to be convicted. So I thought I'd call some friends and get their perspective on how they think we should be approaching 2021. Now, these are all people that I respect highly. They've been on the show. They've shared their wisdom and insight with us before. And we're just going to go through one at a time. They each give like a minute on what they think. So it's not going to be prolonged. But I hope we get some real quick shots of clarity, shots of perspective to give us a little uh, trajectory, give us a little um, calibration for how we should be walking into 2021, or at least how we should consider walking into 2021. So uh, without further ado, we're going to get them going. So we're going to start with um, the biggest punk rock troublemaker I know, the one and only Darren Doan. Uh, If you've seen him, you know you should follow him at Darren Doan. Um, He's produced everything from like top tier advertising to punk rock videos, groundbreaking skates, like the dude is straight punk rock. Um, His videos have billions of views and he's one of the most innovative thinkers on content communication, brand development that I know. I'm happy to call him a friend and uh, he's someone that you should get close to. The one and only Darren Doan. Hey everyone, I'm Darren Doan, the founder and owner of the Doan Creative Agency. So my advice, my take on 2021 is honestly, be ready to break every single rule, maybe even law. I really, really, really mean that. I think the creators right now who are looking at next year and knowing that they're just gonna have to do things that we do to actually make things happen. That's gonna go against the grain. We're gonna have to do that, have to find the people who are looking for people like us to make that happen. So that's my big 2021 is just go get after it and do not be afraid to break the rules because if you don't, it will break you. I don't think I'm surprised by hearing that from uh, someone who has successfully and uh, in a very effective way broken rules. I agree with him 100%. The rule book doesn't apply anymore to so many things because the world has changed. And you're going to hear a a common theme through these messages. But Darren, the one out front saying, if you're afraid of breaking the rules, you're going to be in trouble. You're going to get eaten for lunch when when it comes to 2021. So thanks, Darren, for sharing that. Um, I hope I can break some rules. 2021 maybe we'll break some rules together okay moving on let's see uh we'll go for a little contrast so darren doan uh very outspoken rebel at heart we're gonna go next to uh someone that has become uh, a dear mentor to me this is james orsini he was the chief operating officer of vayner x gary's chief operating officer now he's the president of the sasha group which is gary uh, vaynerchuk's small biz small medium-sized business agency James has an unbelievable measured approach. He's one of the most rational and quick thinkers I've ever met. He's got amazing, uh, I call him James-isms, but um, maybe he'll drop one on us. I don't know. I haven't watched this yet. But James always can put things in incredible, incredible perspective. So uh, let's see what he's got to say to us about going into 2021. Hey, my name is James Orsini, and I'm the president of the Sasha Group, a VaynerX company. 
I am giving my 2021 advice uh, based on some advice that we've been talking about with a few of my leaders. So we're entering a uh, post-abundance uh, society, right? So in 2021, folks are going to revisit their spend, not just by wallet, but by psyche. So it's not going to be about the money. It's going to be about the mood. Do I feel good making this purchase? What's my emotion? Uh, remember, uh, during downturns, uh, you're either moved or you be moved, right? So uh, leapfrogging your competition is important during these times. Uh, remember, bike races are won on the hill. Uh, we are facing a hill in 2021, and this is the time to separate us and increase the gap from our competition. Come on, how money is that? It's about the mood. We're in a post-abundance society. Now it's time to win the race on the hills. You got to leapfrog your competition. Like, look, the opportunity exists. Whenever things get crazy and start to fall apart, the opportunity to leapfrog completely exists. So if you're too protective and afraid, you're going to get passed. But if you're paying attention and you're convicted and you're brave and you're willing you can get disproportionately ahead if you're paying attention. That's the whole premise of why I started the Automotive State of the Union this year because we were able to make a lot of progress in the automotive industry by getting people's attention in a time when everybody was stuck and they were afraid and they didn't know what to do. We helped get people unstuck. You and your organization can help get people unstuck. So again, another one, lean into this conflict, lean into this change. There's a lot of opportunity for the people that will thank you james for sharing that i can't wait to talk to you next time the next person uh, i'm going to bring up here is someone that i've had on the show several times and had had on several shows dr nicole lipkin organizational psychologist um understands she also has a practice she understands boots on the ground she understands organizations and how they work and all of that surrounding like how we think and how we feel and how that affects our performance so her perspective is always good because it comes from a very human internal voice uh, method and just kind of blows it up and lets us see how that's affecting what the results are and what the world is around us. So without further ado, here's my friend, Dr. Nicole Lipkin. 2020 has been rough. However, the cool thing about 2020 is that we've collectively learned what we're capable of. We've learned our limits and we've learned about our capacity to handle enormous ambiguity, change, a bit of loss of control and all of those funky things that challenge us and make it difficult to focus and function. Every single one of us has had to learn how to pivot and adapt, whether it's been our professional lives or our personal lives. So for 2021, I say the best bet for us all is to capitalize on this groundwork that we've already set. And what I mean by that is intentionally challenging ourselves to develop and practice mental agility or an agile mindset. To start, this means practicing deep and conscious self-awareness, recognizing your personal and professional strengths and weaknesses, challenging the stories we tell ourselves or the excuses we make, challenging our own biases and thought processes. The more we challenge the way we think and intentionally keep our minds open and adaptable, the better we are able to pivot when necessary, adjust when needed, and hear the sometimes hard feedback we need to hear to be more effective, productive, and present. Look, developing and practicing mental agility is difficult. It requires coaching and attention. But the more we do this as leaders of ourselves and others, the better able we are to succeed professionally and personally. Okay, that's, that's a hand grenade into uh, what we thought we were capable of. I love how she just said, hey, you've done a lot of work this year. I think we can all agree we've done a lot of mental and emotional work this year to try to recalibrate. And she's like, Take that work. Don't like throw it away and restart. Like you've just done all this work. Take that stability and that ability to kind of reorient yourself in disorienting times and build on that. Now that you've got that new toolkit, now that you've got that new ability, lean into it again, another person perspective, lean into it. Having this mental agility, the ability to take new things, new thinking, new thoughts, and now craft them and manipulate them into something that we can use for good to move us forward. So again, a great encouragement. And I love the part where she's like, you did a lot of work, like just stand on the box you just built. And so uh, I hope that we do a better job of standing on the box that we built. Thank you, 
Nicole. Okay, so for my next guest is someone who's become a friend and also a great supporter of the work that I've tried to do to help the automotive industry because he's also on a path where he's very committed to personally himself and with his company to moving automotive forward into the future, really unleashing the power within the automotive industry and connecting it with what a, a, the customer experience should be in retail. So I'm talking about Alex Vetter, the CEO of the company Cars, which as you know is cars.com and also Dealer Raider and also a web development company called Dealer Inspire if you're not in the auto industry. So Alex, again, CEO of publicly traded company, very, very, very plugged into the needs of consumers. And let's see what he has to say after a year. I mean, look, any publicly traded company, if you're not like doing something crazy and like biotech or anything, the market went like this and then it went, whoops especially for anyone that was in the retail industry. And then guess what? It came back, right? So we talk about started here, went down. Cars is a company that fought their way back. So um, I think Alex's perspective is going to be very good for us uh, coming through a really tough year, but coming out of the year standing and standing strong and moving forward. Let's see what he's got to say. Hey, Paul, this is Alex Fetter, CEO of Cars. If there's one phrase or mindset I have going into 2021, it's optimism and growth. Because what 2020 taught us is that no matter what gets thrown our way, we are one of the most resilient industries there is, and there's nothing that we can't do if we work together. And I'm so excited about what the year ahead can, can bring. There's absolutely no fear. So it's optimism and growth. There you go. Spoken like a true leader, acknowledging the things that were tough, acknowledging the fact that we had to change and adapt and get through them and said in 2021, the focus, optimism, because pessimism doesn't help anybody. And optimism, it's, it's not an unbridled optimism. It is not um, an uninformed optimism. I think it's an optimism based on the confidence that we got through 2020, that we're still standing and that we're looking to move forward. Can you see a consistent thread that is woven through here. I mean, all of a sudden I feel, I mean, I always feel grateful, but I feel really grateful and blessed to have some amazing people in my life. It's just, I didn't do anything to get it. They're just a part of my life and I want them to be a part of your life and the encouragement because when we have these voices around us that are speaking these things, guess what? We start to think that way. Isn't that funny? You surround yourself with people that think positive ways and all of a sudden you find yourself being more positive. Funny thing about that. Must be a coincidence. Okay. All right. So we have two left. We're going to stay on the automotive theme for a minute. The next person is someone that uh, I was not friends with at all in 2020. And actually 2020 is the reason I became friends with Brian Benstock. And Brian Benstock is the number one Honda, is the, the vice president of the number one Honda dealer in uh, the country. Actually, Honda Acura dealer. He is in New York City. He is so New York City, and you'll see what I mean if you haven't seen him before, but Brian Benstock has become one of my favorite people because he tells you like it is, and he's always ready to stand up and push back against adversity. So he's going to be talking a little more specifically about automotive, but I think we can all siphon from some of his energy and insight and his confidence, and like, he's just a boss. Let's get a little word from Brian Benstock. A lot of people are asking, what do I see in 2021? And you know, for one thing for sure, Google's coming out with the Dealer Guidebook 2.5, and I think that's going to be really exciting. I think that's going to be released um, in um, the virtual NADA in early fall, so I think that's great. Um, I think in 2021, we're going to continue to see a tremendous amount of changes, and these changes are going to cause a lot of people difficulties. But remember, in all of the chaos, there's also opportunities. As a leader, I think it's my job to prepare myself mentally and physically for those changes and also to prepare the team. I mean, these uh, difficulties are really opportunities in disguise. And if we can see them for that, I think we are better prepared to make 2021 an even better year than we've ever had before. These difficulties are opportunities in disguise. These difficulties are opportunities in disguise. How many times have we talked about that a challenge is something that brings the good things to the top, that fear is the thing that brings courage and allows courage to thrive. The challenges and the difficulties being opportunities to grow and thrive is the reality. And I love when he says, my job is to prepare the team prepare the troops, prepare the people around me to take those challenges 
and actually leverage those into opportunities to growth. Again, common thread, winding through everything. Speaking of winding, we're going to wind down with one final word. And this is from a dear, dear friend, Claude Silver, the chief heart officer of VaynerX. And uh, Claude is going to give us the, her little bit of advice on how we should be walking into 2021 after this crazy 2020. So let's hear what she has to say. Hey everybody, I'm Claude Silver, Chief Heart Officer of VaynerMedia, coming to you live from Northern Florida. And uh, I've got a piece of advice for 2021. Throw perfection out the window. No such thing as perfection. What we saw happen in 2020, you know, there was no guidebook, there was no rule book. We had to make the rule book and God knows there are potholes in that rule book. So listen, as you go into 2021, do your best. Lead with tenderness and kindness for yourself, for others, compassion, and throw the rule book out the window. There is no perfection. Have a good one. Later. Okay. I didn't actually put all that together. I hadn't watched through those prior to recording this episode. So how crazy it is that we just bookended Darren Doan on one side, Claude Silver on the other side saying, throw the rule book out the window. When you get people that have a like mindset that are ready to lean in, that are leaders in general, you're going to get some similar answers. And I hope that that smorgasbord of leadership helped give you some perspective on your 2021 by giving you some courage coming out of your 2020. I love how Claude closed with kindness, compassion for one another. Lord knows we can use a little more compassion and civility toward one another. I think there are a lot of things that highlighted our differences this year, politically, socially, um, health, fear-wise, economically, right? A lot of differences being highlighted. But I hope that that taught us, the people who were paying attention, that it's good to care for one another. And I hope that you will help me bring some more compassion. You will join me with these people, these friends, these leaders that are like, let's bring some kindness and compassion into 2021. Let's not let the mass media and all the noise on social media and all the negativity drown out what we know is the right thing to do in our minds and in our hearts. And that is to care for one another. That is to love one another. That is to prefer one another and not fight so hard for our own way and fight so hard and be willing to knock everybody over because it's our way or the highway. What would happen? What would it look like if we just started to treat people with kindness, compassion, and tenderness? Kindness, compassion, and care. Kindness, compassion, priority, and civility. Can you just imagine what our country would look like if we started to do that? Man, I mean, it's it's almost seems like this year it's almost too much to believe if you just watch TV and watch social media. But you and I both know you have those relationships, the real relationships with people that don't believe the same things that you believe, with people that maybe voted differently than you voted, with people that have different family situations and different uh, belief structure and different business uh, organizations or maybe even competitors. And you know you have those relationships with those people that are full of compassion and care for one another. Let's scale that in 2021. I can't help but be so thankful and grateful that you've been with me through 2020. I'm excited to leave this year behind, but I don't want to leave all the good things that we learned. I hope you'll step forward with me into 2020 with some more perspective. May 2021 be a year of clarity, perspective, and fulfillment for you and the people you care about the most. I will see you right here next year. You just gotta love some